Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be dating is like tennis. I've got a really good email from a viewer here who's taken what he's learned in my book and in my videos and applied it and successfully attracted a beautiful alpha female who's very sexy, the kind of woman that has tons of guys throwing their dicks at her. And she has lots of choices and lots of options. And he does a beautiful job because you'll see here at the exchanges that happen between her and him, texting, phone calls, messaging, those kinds of things. Sometimes she'll just stop and she won't text or respond back right away. And he just chills out and he waits for her to get back in touch with him. Because she has lots of options with guys and most of the guys don't understand that principle. And they keep pursuing, pursuing, pursuing and she just totally blows them off and she even you can see her she even reveals she has a hard time meeting guys to get it that don't just completely fuck things up with her and if you really like beautiful successful alpha female women this is a great example of how you can completely set yourself apart from the competition and cause her to realize that she's dealing with a real fucking man and get the kind of girl of your dreams the kind of woman that you've always wanted so I got a quote that I wrote on this particular topic and then we're going to go through the email here. And the quote says, beautiful women have the most options and choices with men but are often the most lonely and sexually frustrated women. Why? Most men simply cannot handle being around a beautiful, sexy, smart, successful woman who has her shit together without coming totally unglued, putting her on a pedestal, kissing her ass, acting like a wussy treating her like a celebrity and turning her off. Every beautiful woman who is single and looking is dying to meet a guy who is comfortable in his own skin, comfortable being himself, does not take himself too seriously, knows how to properly court and seduce a woman, will not let anyone walk over him, and simply treats her like a regular person. Guys who can do this have their choice with women, have women constantly throwing themselves at them, and always get what they want. Hence the common expression that most single and searching women utter. All the good guys are either taken or gay. So he says, hey coach, I got no question for you here. I just wanted to share a story on how I applied your principles that will make you proud. I live overseas and had an old classmate I haven't seen in almost 10 years flying into to town on tour. We didn't know each other that well back when we were in the university, but since graduation, she is now an up-and-coming DJ who has played in the main room at Marquee Las Vegas and the EDC Festival. Don't know what the EDC Festival is, but I'm sure it must be fun. He says, so hundreds if not thousands of guys are constantly throwing their dicks at her through Facebook and in person at nightclubs every year. A month before she was in town, we exchanged a few messages on Facebook but she would take up to a week to reply with only one word responses. She's got lots of choices. She's busy. She gets messaged all the time. And most guys, when they don't hear back after a few days or a week, they're like, hey, and they try to force things and poof, that's how you blow it. He says, since I've been following your material for over two years now, I know better than to send her multiple messages and always waited for her to reply before sending another one. This is how you separate yourself from the competition and cause her to go, hmm, this guy's a little different. I'm intrigued. He says, I figure out, I figured if she didn't reply, what's the big deal? No hard feelings as I've learned not to get butt hurt anymore over situations like these from your material. On the night of her set, I got to catch up with her at the club before going on stage for about 10 minutes. We exchanged some brief pleasantries, but I could tell it was awkward from her body language since we haven't seen each other in almost 10 years. From her view, I could have just been another creepy guy at a typical nightclub. Instead, I focused on having a good time with my buddies, and as she played her set, we'd occasionally acknowledge each other on the dance floor. After she was done, the club and PR manager was hanging out with her at the bar and I walked straight up and started talking to her again. Shows a lot of confidence. It's like you act like you own the place. He says, I introduced myself to the club staff and started working the group, creating rapport with everybody. 
very fucking smart. Because if you can get everybody to like you and you're asking questions, remember, in any conversation, whoever's asking the questions is in control and is the leader. That's what a good leader does. And when you do that and you get everybody in the com- in the group to like you, even if it's her girlfriends, her hot other girlfriends, they welcome you in and they push everybody away. And you're going to see that in a second how that played to his benefit. He says, I was asking questions and letting all of them do 70 to 80% of the talking. I mean, that's right out of how to win friends and influence people. And that's been around for, what, 100 years or more? He says, meanwhile, my buddies who are less confident would orbit around us like creepers wanting me to give an introduction, which made me feel super awkward. He says, after a while, the club manager got a sense of this and invited us to a private table to hang out with some champagne. See, it's like they bring you into the group and they push all the cock blocking friends or acquaintances of yours away. It's like you made them an ally. That's awesome. And definitely she's going to take notice of that. He says, we sat next to each other and started talking about how she got into DJing, the lifestyle, developing the business and many other topics as I'm also an entrepreneur. We shared the same outlook on many things. Not following rules, going after what you want, and doing things that make you happy. She's a musician at heart and really loves what she does. I let her do 80% of the talking as I just kept asking questions. Very fucking smart because most of the guys that she's meet, they're trying to seek her approval and they're talking about their accomplishments and trying to make her laugh and be funny or be a certain personality. Instead, what's he doing? He's focusing on her and just sincerely authentically being really fascinated by who she is not only her but everybody everybody else in the group it's fucking brilliant it's like you just totally fly under the radar and you just make people want to be around you because you make them feel like you really care about who they are and you're not just looking at going damn baby you got a nice old booty i like to tap that he says the topic of relationships eventually came up and she mentioned it was very difficult for her being a dj who is constantly on tour every month. What she's really saying is, I most guys are fucking pussies and I can't find a really good man. That's what she's saying. He says she talked about an ex-boyfriend where if she didn't text back in the middle of the night, he would blow up her phone the next morning and always freak out that she was sleeping with a random guy from the club. So this guy was a bitch. This guy was insecure, he was needy, he overpursued, he was controlling because he didn't feel he measured up. He didn't think he was good enough. And that's why he's the ex-boyfriend. And one of the reasons why she's telling you this is she's basically saying, I like you. And as long as you don't act like my ex-boyfriend, you won't talk me out of liking you and sleeping with you and maybe potentially becoming your girlfriend or even your wife or your lover, whatever it happens to be. He says, like you always say, I blurted out, come on, man. That's great. And she cracked up. In the back of my mind, I thought, if she really was that type of girl that slept around behind your back, why would you even want to put yourself through all that shit? He says, eventually, she broke up with him. He says, not not surprising. And basically, does not date anyone now, saying that most guys are too insecure to live with the fact that their girl is a DJ being in front of hundreds of guys every weekend. So women like this have lots of choice but they're just dying to meet a guy who's got his shit together. That's why when you show up and you act the right way, they will fucking grab on you and they won't let you get away. Because it's so rare that they ever come across a guy that gets it. Hence the name of my book, How to Be a 3% Man. That's because only 3 out of 100 men really understand this stuff and can live it and embody it. That's why it's so rare a woman like this has a really hard time meeting guys. Even though she's beautiful and successful because most guys just are fucking pussies. It's the way it is. This is why when you apply this stuff, you really don't have any competition. So why would you worry about something coming along and ripping off your girl or stealing a girl away from you? He says she also doesn't date other DJs, especially ones with a bigger profile because it gives her a bad image. And she wants to be known for her craft, not sleeping her way to the top. Finding a booty call in every city she travels to was also too much work, so she just focuses on her career now as it is taking off. 
The reason why she said it's so much work because guys get a little taste and they just fucking come unglued. They cannot handle it. Just like the quote I said in the beginning of the video. They kiss her. They go out on one date. Maybe they sleep with her and hook up with her. But after that, they start trying to possess her and control her, trying to get in the way of her career, thinking they can lock her down and get her to be a stay-at-home mom. She wants to be successful. She wants to have a great career. And a guy who will adore her and treasure her for her gift and her skills and her talents and celebrate her and encourage her to be even more awesome than she is, she will give her heart to and she'll push everybody else away. He says, I said, I said girls who have a focus in life don't want to date guys who don't have their shit together and she nodded in agreement. And that statement right there communicates that you fucking get it. You get where she's coming from. You understand her. Again, these are things that cause her to go, hmm, you're very intriguing. Hmm, I think I like you. Hmm. He says, it's a common theme I've learned among women that are super successful, beautiful, and confident as I get older. They get tons of guys throwing their dicks at them every day, but very, very few pass the quality filters they have, and some end up living pretty lonely lives. Some of the most beautiful and the hottest women that you're going to meet are some of the loneliest because they just can't find a guy who's got his shit together and who can handle being around them without trying to control, possess, or manipulate them. He says, towards the end of the night, she asked me what I was up to the next day as she had an entire day to kill before taking a flight back home. Isn't that interesting? You gotta let women come to you. You're sitting back like the king of your kingdom. You're leading the conversation. You're leading the interaction. And she's going, hmm, I think I really like you. What are you doing tomorrow? She's literally asking you out on a date. She's, this is the compliment to you. You're so different, she wants to spend time around with you. Fucking pat yourself in the back, dude. That's awesome. He says, a month before, I had asked on Facebook about catching up after the show, but she never replied with a yes or a no, so I never brought it up again as I learned from your material. So she knew you were interested, but really, she just presupposed, because this is pretty much what always happens, that you're just like everybody, every other guy. And so you meet and you hang out and you're talking and you're completely different than an area other guy. And because of that, it's like she's starting to grab on you and pull you into her world. It's just like the quote, Adam Carolla. When a woman likes you, the doors start opening and you literally, all you have to do is walk through them. It's like, so she's standing at the door, half naked going, come on, big boy, come on in. He says, I told her I wasn't sure yet. So she took out her phone and asked me to put my number in so we can figure something out tomorrow. Notice how she's asking for his phone number. Huh. In other words, she's realizing you are really rare, dude, and it's very rare that I come across somebody like this. And so she's like, let me get your number. Let me get a hold of ya. He says, I put it in and sent myself a message to get her contact information as well. As we left the club around 4 a.m., she reminded me to touch base tomorrow about meeting up And I went home. Hey, don't forget about me. Notice how she's starting to pursue. You can't get dumped when you're being pursued. It's just not going to happen. All you can do is talk her out of it, which is what most guys do. And she'll talk you into having a relationship and hooking up with her. He says club management was required by contract to chaperone them on tour So there really was no chance to hang out by ourselves. The next morning, I didn't text her and waited for her to send the first message. Because it's like once they start chasing you, they're pretty much not going to stop. He says, around 3 p.m. in the afternoon, it came in. Why? Because she values you. She places a high value on having you in her life and being around you and not fucking it up. So much that she's going to grab onto you and not let you go. As long as you continually act this way. He says, and she told me what her schedule was like, ask, was like asking when I could come meet up. He says, like Adam Carolla brilliantly said, when the door is open, you walk through, and when they close, you walk away. Absolutely. What was I just saying a minute ago about that quote? It's fucking brilliant. He says, it was night. It was night and day difference from a month ago where she could take one week to reply with just one word. 
Now there were smiley faces and exclamation marks across two to three messages sent in a row. She's going out of her way to be on her best behavior because she doesn't want to fuck it up with you. Isn't that beautiful? Fucking masterfully played, dude. Good fucking job. He says, we exchanged a few messages and I said I'd meet up with them later in the afternoon and I was already meeting a buddy from the night before for lunch. As her phone was only working overseas on Wi-Fi, she told me to text the club manager to coordinate because she couldn't reply once she left the hotel. We ended up going around the city, doing some shopping, and had a nice dinner with everyone before she headed to the airport. She told me to hit her up if I was ever back in LA as we parted ways. I didn't expect anything going in on this, but it's great to see yourself improve and become closer to a 3% man. Dude, you fucking crushed it. You you made the – I mean it's obvious because she had to be chaperoned the whole time because of the contract that the management had. But it's like she pulled you into the world. It's like she dragged you along. It's fucking beautiful. He says, thanks for all your work, coach. It's a pity that some guys who give you shit won't put in the effort to improve themselves and would rather live a mediocre life. Well – People too weak to follow their own dreams will always find a way to discourage yours. Why? Because they want to project their own self-hatred and self-loathing onto you. And if they can bring you down to their level and make you just as miserable as they are, then they don't feel so bad about themselves. But when you don't let weak people diminish you, then in turn they can believe in you. They can say, you know what? Nothing I do diminishes that guy. Maybe he's fucking right. Maybe there's something to it. I've had countless emails from guys over the years who said, initially when I started following you, I thought you were a jackass and you were a foul mouth sexist, blah, 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 whatever it happens to be. But you know what? I started listening to what you were saying and I actually went out there and started applying it and I thought – and I realized, holy shit, this fucking Coach Corey Wayne guy, he's absolutely right. And they even apologized to me for sending harsh emails or doubting me and it's like that's why I say it. I put my best stuff out there. I even let people read my book for free on my website. If you don't believe what I – anything I say, just apply it. You'll see that it works. He says, but hey, it's their loss and mine to gain. Well, again, that's because you set yourself apart from every other guy that most women are going to encounter and that's why you get to have choice and you get to be the one that gets to interact with a woman like this. And I'd say more than likely after a few days or a week or whatever, she's going to reach out to you. And if she reaches out to you, what should you do? Set a Skype video date and talk on Skype. And then at some point, you say, we've got to get together. Let's meet up somewhere. And then both of you fly together. Maybe she comes to visit you, whatever it happens to be. Hang out. Have fun. Hook up. Create an opportunity for sex to happen. But awesome email, dude. Thanks for sharing. It was great. And so if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session with yours truly. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon. 